All right. I think we are live. We are uh, jumping on here uh, just around lunchtime, depending if you're watching this live or not. But what we're going to be doing today, I wanted to jump on here real quick because I had a question that came through and I wanted to address it. And I wanted to kind of highlight a couple of things here. If you are looking to find a product, if you're doing, you know, product research, if you are looking to expand your product line or even add something to your brand, or maybe the question is, can I build a launch list around my product? Or what should I be thinking about when doing product research as far as brand building? Or maybe I don't want to build a brand. So all of these things I want to talk about, but what I really want to do here today is what we call niche down. I want to talk about niching down. And for those of you that don't know what that means, I'm going to clear that up here soon. And uh, if you're from another part of the world, it might be niche down. Um, niche. I have to actually take the way that I say it and make my lips go to the side. Niche. Um, so I like saying niche better. It's, it's just easier on the lips. Um, Chris Schaefer, how are you doing, man? Are you ready to, uh, to, to talk about this? I've got a couple of screens, uh, or a couple of slides that I want to bring up here in a minute and kind of go through this. But what I want people to do is I want people to get this concept. It's really important. Um, anything you want to say here before we jump in? I'm ready to rock and roll, man. And this is something I think that is extremely important for people. You know, it, it, we titled this four simple steps to avoid having your next product flop on Amazon. And it's because we think it's that important, right? Even in something like an open brand where you're not necessarily going to develop what, what I've been referring to as like a cohesive brand, right? What we normally yeah. think of when people throw out the word brand, multiple products that go together, making sure that you go through these four simple steps for any product that you launch is going to help make sure that it's not a flop and that it is going to be at least that, that bunt, that base hit mm -hmm. and potentially that double, that triple or that home run. Yeah, absolutely. So what I want to also do, guys, is open up the chat. If you guys have any comments or any questions, drop them in there. And also do me a favor. If you find this valuable, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And oh, yeah, maybe subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified when we do more of these. We are going to be stepping up our game here in 2018 and doing... Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of these. So um, let's get let's get rocking and rolling. Chris, is there anything else you want to say before we get rocking and rolling? No, let's jump into it, brother. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, all right. Let me go ahead and bring up uh, the slides that I have prepared. Really, really simple slides today, too, guys. Nothing, nothing super fancy at all. But uh, I want to bring these up because I think it's important to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. Chris, can you see that? Okay. Uh, I can tell you here in just a second. Yes, I can. I can see your whole screen, though. Is there a way that you can share that out? Uh, like, just make that full screen so that everybody can read oh, it. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, actually, on their mobile let devices, me, there. Let, let me do that one more time. It looks like I might have. Okay, that's what I shared. I shared. Uh, I didn't share the doc. I shared the the uh, where I created it in Keynote. So let me just make sure that that is still up. So bear with me. Uh, we're doing this like we said here live on the fly. Uh, so let me just go ahead and see if I can't find that doc. And I thought I, re I actually, uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, boom. Oh no, not the fidget spinner. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me go back. Here we go. All right. Can you see it now, Chris? Yes, I can. And I can read it. That's right. the more important version. That is. All right. So here is what I want to do. Um, I want to talk about niching down and I want you to ask yourself some questions. All right. So when you're doing product research or you're thinking about adding a product uh, to Amazon or even your own e-commerce, these are some questions that I always ask myself. So I'm just going to kind of blow through these. We can talk about them and I'm going to give you some, uh, some things here to think about. So when you're looking at a product, okay, number one, is there a community around these products? Okay. Or is there a product that's being used inside of this community, inside of this group? And I'll give you an example here in a minute. Number two, can I build an email list in this market? That's another one that you should be thinking about, okay? And it's gonna be really important that you do this because we just talked about our new brand and uh, the other day on a, on a YouTube Live and a Facebook Live for that matter, and we were talking about, we really looked at the entire, the, the entire picture. We, we looked at a community, but then we also looked at, it, can we build an email list in this market? So that's number two. And I'll tell you why that's important here in a minute. Number three, is this market, consuming content. 
Are they watching videos? Are they sharing pictures? Are they talking about you know the stuff that they're doing within this market? Uh, if you're an, if you're a, an avid runner that does marathons, you probably belong to a few Facebook groups that you guys talk amongst yourselves about that and about training. And then you say, well, I wear this brace or I use this tape or whatever. You start to talk about it. That's what we're talking about. Is there is there a, a content that's being created inside of this market? Number four. The final one is, can I think of three to five products to sell that customer like or that person right off the bat? Like, is there three things that you can kind of just come up with? Or even go to Amazon and see this product was purchased and then they give you three recommendations or four recommendations of other products that you could sell. Can you, can you see that? Do they come to mind? So with those uh, different questions that you're asking yourself, those four questions, you're asking yourself, is there already people out there that are talking about this or are they interested in this? If you're in fishing, it could be a fishing market. All right. So let me give you an example uh, of this right here. So let me go back over to the proper document and that would be this one right here. So on this one right here, this is a fidget spinner. You guys probably know about this. Is there a community being built around fidget spinners? Chris, can you answer that question? There might be, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, <laughs> For me, probably not, right? But is there some people out there doing like YouTube videos on fidget spinner trick shots potentially, right? The answer to this is most likely not. It's not something that people are going to be passionate about, although it is a trend, Scott. And, and I mm -hmm. think it's important to kind of differentiate between those two. There, you know, everybody can be interested in something and there's still not necessarily what we would call a community, right? Which is much more of a like a longer term organization of people versus people just going, oh, this thing is cool and sharing it. And I think that's kind of an important distinction, right? Like TAS is a community. It's a place where we all go, we all hang out, we talk about different things. We don't just say, hey, here's this newest, coolest thing. And then nobody ever sees it ever again, right? Like that's kind of what you see with fidget spinners. It's a trend and there's a lot of people talking about it and doing stuff with it, but it's not a community. It's not going to be there for the long term. And I don't see anybody, you know, talking about how fidget spinners change their lives or some of those kinds of things that you would see inside of a community. Does that make sense, Scott? It, it makes perfect sense. And, uh, you know, my thing is here is if we are going to be selling fidget spinners, uh, I'm probably not going to say to myself, I'm going to go build an email list for fidget spinners. Now, could you argue and say, well, you could build, uh, you know, uh, maybe a list to parents that are buying kids toys right i mean even at this like if we were into legos that might even be different right then it's even right. more specific but this is like so random that i personally would not even if the numbers were fantastic i would not jump into the fidget spinner market unless all i was going to do is be first to market scoop up some cash and leave right like that's you know and with you know with also having you know the the chance of that trend just going going away and then from there, I am either stuck with these or I have to try to find a way to liquidate them. Um, so that's another risk that you take when you jump in on a trend. But you could totally do that. Now, if you were building a kid's brand, totally, you could do that. If you were building something in a market that you were doing like kid toys or, you know, yo-yos or something like that, that might work, right? That may be the case. But in, in this case, for me, no, I, I would say there's not a, a community and that would be something that I would look at. So hopefully that, that makes sense as far as building a list. Now, let's talk about this one for a second. Love this picture, by the way. It reminds me of my dog. My dog is not a pug. He's a mix. He's a puggle and a beagle. So he's a puggle, as they call them. And there are communities out there for them too. But can you build a community in the pug market? And the answer is yes, you absolutely can. Now, could you in just the dog market? Sure, you could. But you're probably going to be able to niche down, which to me is better because then you're calling out a specific type of person in that market. So again, in this case, we're, we're going after the pet market, then we're going after the dog market, and then we're going after the pug market. So it's a certain breed, all right? So that's what we call niching down or niching down, depending on where you come from. So by doing that, we can start to see what these people are interested in. Okay, and now we can start to tailor our products and our marketing and our content towards the pug market. All right, Chris, anything you want to add to that? 
So I, I think the the difference here, Scott, and it's how you and I look at business in general, but it, it applies to Amazon, right? Somebody who has a, a Puggle, which is a much better naming convention than Peagle, um, <laughs> is going to have that Puggle. How long, how long is Brody expected to live? Like 15 years? Uh, yeah, I hope. I hope. Yeah. Okay. So let's just, let's just say he lives to 30, right? They're going to have that puggle for 30 years. They're going to have that fidget spinner for five minutes, mm -hmm. right? And then they're going to drop it. They're going to break it. They're going to do whatever. Dogs are a great example of this because it's something that exists for a long period of time, right? And so you have lots of different things that you need to talk to and understand and, and work through. And I think that's why it's so important to have that in a community, right? And, and you see that specifically with dogs and people will go out and seek specific answers with something like a community, right? Like I have a great Munsterlander, which I found out because Google told me what kind of dog I had and I never knew. Uh, everybody called it something different, but now I know that there's this whole community of people and they have answered all of the questions that we've had about his weird behavior and why he does certain things that other dogs don't do. Having that community is extremely important because it gives us a place to market that product. It gives us a really obvious way to market that product. Does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. And uh, I'd seen that we weren't being able to switch between cameras. I think I've got it figured out now, Chris. I think I just had to uh, have you present, but right now it's not switching back. So now I would have to say no present. So it's a little different than the other platform we're using. So we're gonna see how this all, this all works. Um, but uh, okay, so going back to, uh, you know, what we're talking about here as far as like building that community inside of, you know, whether it's uh, a pug market or a fishing market. Now, how would you do this in the fishing market? Well, let's talk about bass fishing. Maybe now we're talking about, you know, bass fishing versus just fishing in general. And then in that fishing community, we could technically probably even branch out into the hunting because some of those fishermen are hunters. So we can start to kind of go a little bit laterally versus just deep and, and wide in that particular market. But you get what I'm doing here, right? We're seeing if there's a, a place for this to actually uh, build a community. All right. So let me just go ahead and uh, switch back over. Chris, can you see that now? I can see it on my side, but it's still just showing me on the front end here. All right. So. Well, let me just go ahead and switch that over to present to everyone and see if that makes a difference. Uh, all right, cool. You should be there able to see the community. Yes. And then, uh, See that beautiful pug. All right, cool. So, um, all right, so let's go to the next, the next slide that I have up here. So what I did really, really quickly is I just went to Facebook and I typed in pug. Uh, and I think I just typed in like pug owner or pug group or pug community. And immediately this is what popped up. So I see pages. There's pug lovers community, 104,000 like this. Pug memes, 39,000. Um, emergency pugs, 189,000. And then there is Pugs Love. That's a group. That one's got 17,000. And then We Love Pugs, 11,000. This was literally in a minute and a half that I, I did that, that little bit of research. So I didn't even drill in. I can guarantee I can find more. I can guarantee I can go over to Instagram. I can guarantee I could probably go over to uh, YouTube or, uh, like I said, other, other channels and find people building little communities around about this. All right. So that tells me that there is an opportunity there for me to build a community or an email list in this market and they're buying products. So I can instantly say, let's see, I can do, right off the bat, I could do like t-shirts and mugs and I could do uh, collars, I could do little uh, name tags, I can do, uh, I could heck, I could go and partner up with someone in supplements or I could be an affiliate for a supplement company uh, because there's always different supplements that they need. Um, and there's, uh, uh, let's see, there's leashes, there's uh, probably little booties that you can put on your pug. There's all different things that you can do. And that's just randomly coming up with a few ideas without even doing any research. Now, once I'm armed with the research, I can go and start looking into Amazon and start looking at different platforms to see if there's actually products out there that I can serve to this market. All right. So let me move on to this one and then we'll wrap up here. So these are the questions that I asked if I was looking at going into the pet market and if I was going into the pug market, okay? Community, check, yes. Build a list, yes, I could definitely build a list. Create content that people wanna consume, yes. Buy products, yes. So there are four things right there that I just asked myself and it, it passed with flying colors. 
Okay. Now, sometimes you might find that it could be a little borderline. Some of these you could say, well, yeah, I kind of think I could. You don't want to kind of be like that. You want to actually know that you can see it, it's there. All you need to do is go out there and just kind of build out what you need inside of this to be a brand. Um, does that make sense, Chris? It does, and Scott, kind of just to play devil's advocate, I jumped onto Facebook and, and ran a search for pages and groups on fidget spinners, and there's a handful of them out there. But when you look at the numbers, you know, all of the fidget spinner groups combined do not equal one, the lowest one that you could see uh, in terms of members of those pug groups, right? And the reason is that product itself does not solve a problem. It doesn't help anybody. It's a it's a cool thing mm -hmm. and it's a trend, but yeah. it doesn't actually solve a problem and it doesn't help make people's lives easier. And that's really what people are looking for when they buy any product. If your product that you're looking at solves that problem or makes somebody's life easier, you're going to be able to check all those boxes, right? You're going to be able to build a list around it. You're going to be able to find other products that meet that same uh, challenge or make people's lives easier in a similar way, right? And when you look at something like fishing, I also did this, this for fishing, Scott, even just at the top level, there are hundreds of thousands of people, like 52,000 people like fishing on Facebook, mm -hmm. right? Just, just generically fishing. But then you look at I love fishing, there's 325,000 people in that community. And if you have something that solves one of their problems or helps right. make fishing easier for them, you're going to be able to reach out to them. You're going to be able to build a list and you're going to ensure that you have that stable base of people. It's great to launch a product if you want to try to go do a money grab. And, and I started talking about this earlier, but having that long-term dedication, like you have a pug, you're going to have that pug 15 or 20 years. If I'm a business owner, I would much rather have that customer potential for 15 or 20 years than I would for five minutes till somebody launches a fidget spinner with lights. It's mm -hmm. great if you want to be in this for the short term. And we actually have uh, one of our good friends who I don't know if you know this, Scott, made fifty, sixty thousand $60,000 in fidget spinners, but only placed one or two orders because he knew that it was going to be a trendy item. And so he was just going to use that to bankroll the new brand that he was building because he needed some additional capital. If that's what you're going to do, that's fine. Just keep in mind that there's a massive downside to it. The products that we like to find and launch on Amazon are the ones that are going to be around for a while for us, right? Mm -hmm. We have kind of this five, 10 year plan, if you will, mm -hmm. because we know that we can build this brand. And if we have products that spike and dip, then we have to figure out ways to replace that revenue. We would much rather consistently hit singles, doubles, and triples, then hit one home run out of every 50 products that we try. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I agree 100%. So going back to uh, what we just talked about, it, it's really, you know, understanding that when you are looking at a market, and when you're asking yourself, you know, these questions, you have to say to yourself, like, am I just there to launch and jump on a trend? or just sell one product to one customer and just keep finding new customers, because that's what it comes down to. I personally think it's easier, if you're gonna do the work, you're gonna do the same amount of work, really. If you're gonna do the work, you might as well go out there and build something like an asset, like an email list, a community, so this way here, it's gonna be easier for you to leverage that and then you know boost your sales on Amazon, and like we call feed the beast, give them the sales that they want to help you rank and get eyeballs. To me, that's it's a better approach. Now, that doesn't mean that if you see something and you have access to some resources and you wanted to piggyback off of a trend, go for it. You know, that that's fine. But this is what I would do. If I'm thinking about starting a new brand or a new market, I'm looking at this. I go into my Jeep story that we talk about. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're looking at going into the Jeep, uh, you know, arena, well, I ask myself these questions. Same thing. Is there a community around these products? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There are, okay, can I build an email list in this market? Yes, is the market consuming content? Yes, can I think of three to five products to sell to customers? Yes, right? So I just take myself through those questions and that kind of allows me to make a better decision than just saying like, well, is this something that's going to be in now but not in tomorrow? Um, and I think that's a big one. So um, that's really all I wanted to do here, guys. Just jump on here, give you guys, uh, you know, really, really give you guys that, that list that little checklist so this way here you can ask yourself these questions when you're starting to think about what products you want to launch because i know when when thinking about like you know how do i go out there and do product research like how do i go out there and decide if a product is really a good fit 
this is what I do. This is what Chris does. This is what we do when we're looking at building a brand. Um, you know, whether that's in an open brand or not. In an open brand, we generally will look at yes, we're we're going after one product in one market, but the market still supports a you know more than one product. So hopefully that makes sense. Chris, anything else you want to wrap up with? A great question here from Carolina. She said, "Do you think it's a bad idea if my brand has offers for both cats and dogs?" And to me, the answer there is no right? But you do need to keep in mind that those are two very different communities. There's some crossover mm -hmm. and assuming, yeah, my cat's not in the office right now, but I have, you know, a cat and I have a dog and there's a gecko somewhere out there, right? But I wouldn't necessarily join a, a dog lovers Facebook group and expect to see you marketing stuff to cats. Right. So you have to keep in mind that as you expand into both of those markets, that you're going to be talking to those people differently, right? You're not necessarily going to be emailing the dog people cat memes but you might email the cat people cat memes. Your Facebook page for your brand should be a little bit more generic, but you should have content that focuses on both cats and on dogs. The people who are dog lovers are gonna resonate with the dog stuff. The people who are cat lovers are gonna resonate with the cat stuff. But when it comes back to something like the community or the email list itself, I think that's okay and it's fine. You just need to keep in mind that not everybody in that community or everybody on that list is gonna connect with every piece of content and that you need to create specific pieces of content for each of those people, if you will, and treat them differently because they are different customers and different customer avatars. Does that make sense, Scott? Are you on the same boat there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely am. And uh, I again, like I don't wanna keep, uh, you know, uh, repeating ourselves, but, it, it's really important that you just look at it this way. And the reason why I wanted to come on here is because I, I received a question, uh, I think it was today or yesterday that I answered uh, on an Ask Scott session where it was like, I have a product and I'm not sure if I should build an email list. And the question would be, well, number one, is there anything here that I'm talking about today? Does that help you decide if you should build a list? If, you're, if your product was the fidget spinner, I would personally say, no, I would probably not uh, build a list. But that's just me. Um, does it, you know, are there, you know, are there communities being built around that? Like Chris, you said you found a few, but are there communities that it's, are? It's not really a community. It's buying, selling, and trading. They're not talking about them. They're there not doing go. anything else there. there and go. that's, you know, you're, you're going to find groups of people, if you will, that yeah. relate to any product. Right. But is there actually a community? Are there people there? Is there dedication? And the other factor for me, Scott, that's come up a couple times as we've discussed this here today is, is there like a time element to it? Is it something that people are going to care about for longer than an hour? Right. 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 Is it something that that they're going to have in their house? Is it something that they're going to have with them? Like the Jeep is a great example. A lot of people have Jeeps for two or three generations, right? Or they'll go buy a classic Jeep because that's what they love. You're not going to go buy a classic fidget spinner. <laughs> I guess right. it would just be like, I don't know. Um, but, you know, it, as you start to do this, you'll see this more and more. And the the community lies in the passion about the subject, right? So even if you see a group about fidget spinners, dive in and see what they're talking about. In those groups, they're just talking about, oh, I like the red one, not the blue one. That's not passion, right. that's desire. And that's okay, right. but that's not what you want for the long term. What you want for the long term is people who are passionate about the niche or niche. And now I'm doing the mouth thing too. And because they're gonna be around for a long period of time. And like Carolina said, you know, I have cats and dogs. Those are great niches, right? Now, if you could have a list, I would take that one step further and say, you know, do you have a list for people who own large Munster lenders or Puggles or whatever else, right? And you can start to niche that down even further or niche that down even further and get products that are specifically for those people. Like Scott, the, the food that you feed Brody and the amount that you feed Brody is probably not anywhere close to what I feed Owen, right? Owen is a hundred pounds. Exactly. Brody is 20? Uh, he's about 35. He needs to go on a diet. 30. He should be about 30. <laughs> okay, so he's a chunky <laughs> puggle. So they might eat closer than, no, just kidding. Um, but like the, the problems that they're gonna have and the challenges that they're gonna have through their lives are different and we need to be aware of that. And as we can start to differentiate that, it makes more and more sense to launch some of those kinds of products. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. So uh, I think that's gonna pretty much wrap it up here for our little uh, our little uh, YouTube live and our uh, content that I wanted to create for you guys because I think it's really important. And whether you're watching this live or you're watching this on a replay, uh, you know, just understand that uh, you know these are these are questions that you should be asking yourself, and hopefully they've helped you. Um, if you guys want to be notified when we go live or when we post new content, definitely subscribe to this channel somewhere on this 
somewhere on this page. And uh, yeah, somewhere. And uh, we will uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. If you have any anything that you want us to create as far as content, let us know. And uh, and we may just do that here in 2018 because we are going to be stepping up our YouTube game. So uh, let us know. We'll uh, we'll try to do what we can to create it for you. So guys, that's it. That's going to wrap it up. I'm going to get out of here. I know Chris is going to get out of here, and we're going to get uh, we're going to get back to work. And you should too, all right? So take care, guys, and as always, take action. We'll see you guys.